Good morning. I'm Jim Erringaren, the GIS manager for the County of Butte in California. Butte County is located north of Sacramento and includes the flatlands of the Central Valley and the foothills of the Sierras. By California standards, it's not huge with the total population of about 220,000. Chico's the largest city at 93,000 and Paradise is second to the town that burned at 26,000. Those are populations prior to the fire. On November 8th of 2018 at about 6.30 a.m., the campfire was reported. The progression of the fire and the timeline are dramatic. Less than six hours later, it was estimated that 95% of the town of Paradise had been completely destroyed six hours. The fire ultimately grew to over 150,000 acres and 85 people died. Of the 18,000 plus structures destroyed, about 14,000 of those were primary residences. Roughly 19,000 have relocated to the city of Chico and others moving elsewhere to other parts of the country and, and beyond. We're accustomed to supporting emergency wildland events, but this incident involving a wildland urban interface created many new challenges for us. We live and work in this area and the power and cell network in some places were down for days and completely overloaded when they were working. Our locally housed web mapping applications were disrupted and unreliable. We could have worked remote from the power outages by using ArcGIS online but our implementation of this was still very new and we quickly learned that the best time to learn how to use and support the use of ArcGIS Online was not in the middle of a major catastrophe. Both of my staff were directly impacted. One lost his home and had to relocate and make sure his family was in good condition and the other had to leave. Northern California has a great network of folks and everyone wanted to help us but we weren't in a position to be able to hand off tasks easily due to the overwhelming state, so we chose carefully on who, what offers we accepted. The, the request for data, maps, and application was untenable. Everyone wanted everything completed before they asked for it and did not follow the ICS protocol for submitting these requests. Many times they didn't really understand what they even needed. To top it all off, we had to support multiple locations. There was an emergency operations center, an EOC, in Orville, where many of the county building inspectors were based out of. And we're accustomed as the unincorporated area to, to support that EOC. But the town of Paradise um, was decimated. So they created their own EOC in the city of Chico, and we had to support that one as well. It takes at least 30 minutes to get back from one to the other, so it was making it difficult to support morning briefings held at both locations. From a GIS perspective, there were so many moving pieces. The various incident management teams mapped the fire as well as supported the search and rescue operations. They also had drones assisting with mapping of the suppression effort. These local agencies all stepped forward immediately to assist us in supplementing our small GIS shop in person and remotely. There were many offers from other agencies and GIS professionals in the area and beyond that that we were just unable to accept. Thank you to Esri. Through Esri's disaster response program, we obtained all the ArcGIS on licensing and service credits that we needed for this event they also provided Chris Ferner, who we call Fern, their wildland fire solutions specialist, who was invaluable in helping manage all our GIS operations and will be <laughs> forever indebted to her. Sorry about the mic there. Um, so the GIS response. Cal Fire has an amazing damage inspection team that using boots on the ground and ArcGIS collector quickly recorded all structure loss and damage. The county is required to do an additional inspection and initially this was started on paper. The challenge being that it's impossible to correctly identify a property when the inspectors were not from the area. 
and there are no house numbers or street identifiers left because everything burned. We created a Survey123 form for inspectors to collect information on places not included in the structure data and created another collector app that used the CAL FIRE data that they had already collected and only allowed county inspectors to edit four county-specific fields. This maintained the integrity of the CAL FIRE data and a result of this process, the CAL FIRE damage inspection data template now includes these fields for every fire. Once the county building inspectors were finished with their data collection, GIS Core, a dedicated organization comprised of volunteer GIS professionals, assisted us. Their team diligently QAQC'd tens of thousands of field collection points that the building inspectors had done remotely through our ArcGIS Online account, which, which could not have been completed otherwise due to our staffing shortages. With the assistance of expertise at hand, we developed multiple web mapping applications, dashboard, dashboards, and, and the story map that we're gonna see here. So let's take a look at the story map we de developed. We like it because it tells a story through the response and recovery stages and gives users a one-stop place to get the information. So the first one we'll look at is the 360 panoramic images that were developed from the drone imagery taken out there by a company called Hangar immediately after the fire. The company also provided video flyovers that are also shown here, but for purposes of time, we will move on. Due to the speed and veracity of the fire, all the zones, all the evacuation zones were just, they're red, they're evacuation orders and they had to leave. Uh, we relied on it more heavily on, on this evacuation map to inform residents when they could return to their areas and we could update this map from anywhere through ArcGIS Online to match the sheriff's information. There's a tab displaying the CAL FIRE structure status map that you already saw in the map on the last slide. We utilized the before after slider that you can set up in story map um, to give the user a look at their area before the fire and afterwards using that drone imagery. Phase one of hazardous waste assessment and cleanup in the recovery process by the EPA and the California Department of Toxology and Substance Control, that's been completed. So currently we are still in phase two where users can see the status of their property regarding debris removal and the ability to apply for building permits, which there aren't very many of yet, but it's slowly moving on and it's at 1.9 now. So preparations for future events. Fern and I laugh when she asked me a month later after the heat of the recovery what I would do differently the next time, and I said I'd buy a camper van and drive away. <laughs> and, <laughs> and my GIS tech joked, the next time they open an EOC, he would tell me, I'll EOC you later. Yeah, you know, I, I hope that I never have to, you know, support such a de devastating incident again. And I also hope that my county never has to experience one either. But even an incident of smaller scale will benefit from our experiences through this campfire. From a GIS perspective, we're preparing, we're working on some more of our data. We're working on sharing more of our data publicly through the hub in ArcGIS Online so others can easily find our authoritative data sets and access it from remote locations in case we went down. If we need to create a map or, or, or an app, remember many incidents evacuations impact office locations and we don't want to be helpless if we can't get to our office. We have developed ready-made templates to get initial maps out quickly and a request form for GIS services from the EOC to properly channel all the incoming requests because we got we got hit from the sides a lot and we didn't know how to we didn't know how to take all those requests in. Um, be diligent in allowing GIS staff time to recuperate from the physical and mental toll these elongated events take on your staff. 
and, and will continue to maintain the key rela relationships we developed in this event through all those agencies you see up above. The Incident Command System, the ICS, as many of you here probably know, has become the management system designed to enable effective and efficient incident management. In our organization, GIS services reside under the logistics section, and all requests for GIS services need to go through that section. None of us individually can accommodate all the needs that arise from these emergencies. Collaboration is key for data mapping and application development and sharing. It's impossible to relay the effects of this fire and its lasting impact to Butte County in a short presentation. Eight months later, we see a constant stream of debris removal vehicles through our area. It's impacted all of us to varying degrees with countless stories of the challenges we all have faced as we continue to adjust to our new reality. So don't postpone your, your preparation. Thank you.